Tonight on KGW News, a dangerous and flesh-eating drug. I've never experienced anything like this in my life. Hear from a man who found out firsthand just how bad it can get. Plus, the foods of his culture shut down his business because somebody complained. A restaurant owner pushes back over what the city called a big stink. Why he says it all amounts to discrimination. And later. I mean, this is one of the most meaningful experiences of my life, I would say. The new tech helping Blazers fans who are blind feel their way through the game. Good evening, everyone. David Molko here. Welcome to the weekend. You're looking live over downtown Portland, where it is 60, 61 degrees on this Friday night, and it looks like we're in for a bit of a warm up. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino with a first look at your forecast. Matt. Nice and clear over the Cascades right now. This is Timberline Lodge, and that is the moon in the western sky there. Interestingly enough, 45 degrees right now up at Timberline, so it's pretty mild up there as well. Cool sunset tonight from our camera in the Dalles. Now you can see the clouds moving from south to north. Fun to watch the river roll as well. They never really clear, but there was a crease in clearing out to the west, so the clouds lit up a little bit, which led for a fairly dramatic view as the sun went down over the gorge. Now, we had thunderstorms in parts of eastern Oregon today. You can see the lightning strikes we had there. They've all fallen apart now that the sun has been down for several hours. A few sprinkles left over the high country there, and there's a little bit of rain on the southern Oregon coast, but there was quite a bit of rain in eastern Oregon. Two tenths of an inch at Legrand, nearly a quarter of an inch at Baker City. But if you look at some of the more remote weather stations, Crane Prairie had almost two thirds of an inch of rain. We go down the less Elgin had about a half an inch. Hell's Canyon had about a half an inch. East of uh, Union, Oregon, exactly half an inch and just east of Sumter, about four tenths of an inch. So again, there are some pretty decent rainfall from those storms today. And we'll see a repeat performance again tomorrow. This is where the most likely area of thunderstorms will be. Notice it does not reach the Willamette Valley or the Portland area or really even Mount Hood pretty much out of it. There's a slight chance we could get a shower up towards Mount Hood, but the southern and central Oregon Cascades and points east really the area that I'm concerned with for thunderstorms again tomorrow. A lot of lightning, but again, these are fairly wet thunderstorms, a lot of rain with them too. So clearing overnight tonight, if it hasn't already, mainly sunny, warm weekend for us. I'll show you how warm it a bit. And again, we'll watch that thunderstorm threat. David. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thank you, Matt. Well, tonight we are taking a look at another side of Portland's drug crisis. It is a drug called Trank that seems to be showing up more across the Northwest. A warning, some may find the details in the story disturbing. And as Blair Best reports, some dr drug users say they are now reconsidering the risks. Willie has a history with addiction heard often on Portland streets. Well, years ago, I started off with heroin, never shot up, went to um, the fentanyl pills, now the powder. And lately, a new hidden drug. It's in the uh, fentanyl, right? I guess um, the trank is used for animals. Obviously, the tranquilizer somehow, some way it got into the fentanyl, the opiate. He's talking about an animal tranquilizer called xylazine, known on the streets as Trank, a flesh-eating drug making its way across the Pacific Northwest. I never experienced anything like this in my life, so it's it's very uh, life-threatening. The first time Willie smoked Trank, it was laced in his fentanyl. Mm, I just know the dope was good. And some of my buddies they were like, no, you don't want to take that. I don't want to smoke that no more. That has Trank in it, the Trank in it. So I stopped taking that. It was too late. The drug had already infected his feet. So I just got, came from the hospital or whatever. This is actually good. So I'll be able to scrub all this, all this pinkness around here is good. Before, it was green. All this was green. I experienced maggots with it. I experienced gang green. This happened because of the train gap. Multnomah County Health Department data shows one person died from an overdose involving trank and fentanyl in 2022. Five people died in 2023. There are no confirmed deaths involving trank so far this year. Fortunately here, we're still in the single digits. Dr. Teresa Everson is with the Multnomah County Health Department, where they're watching the rise in trank closely. So the first thing that we always go to in public health is education, making sure that people are aware of what exists in the local drug supply, making sure folks know how they can stay safe. That and it's not going to close up or go away unless you take a break from the fitting off. So is Trank and what it does to you really the turning point for you to get off drugs? He had to think about it. That and I know that I know better than what I'm doing. Blair Best, KGW News.
To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines now, police are investigating what is now the 23rd deadly shooting in Portland this year. Authorities say a man was killed around 1230 this afternoon near Northeast MLK and Gertz Road. It's an industrial area with RVs parked on the side of the street. There, there is no word yet on a motive, and so far, police have not made any arrests. Well, that is the sound of SWAT teams in action in Hillsborough, where they took a man into custody this morning after a six hour standoff. This is at a home near 7th and Washington. Deputies were there because the man had warrants out for his arrest. They say he barricaded himself inside and they feared he was armed. We're working to find out more about the suspect and what charges he faces. And the owner of a Northeast Portland Vietnamese restaurant that said he had to close down following odor complaints says he's now planning to sue the city. Eddie Dung of Fergabo said anonymous complaints in 2022 led to years of hefty fines and inspections. Dong says he tried to mitigate the smell, but the city eventually asked him to invest in a $40,000 air filtration system, which he says he couldn't afford. This is a community he's built, not just within the Vietnamese community, um, but in the broader Portland community, you know, sharing his culture, sharing heritage foods, and not now not being able to do that and being left in limbo and left with a lot of costs. Dong's attorney alleges the city's ordinance disproportionately targets ethnically diverse restaurants. The city declined to comment on pending litigation. New tonight, 13 people who lost a loved one to COVID-19 at a Portland nursing home have now reached a settlement with a company that owned it. In just the first few months of 2020, health care at Foster Creek quickly became the state's largest outbreak site. 30 residents died from COVID and nearly 120 got infected before the state shut down the facility in May of that year. An attorney for the families who sued says the care home was chronically understaffed and did not have proper infection protocols. Um, they treated a lot of these residents as if they were just gonna die anyway. So in that way, it was, in my opinion, um, a very uh, poor negligent treatment of all of these individuals and led to a massive disaster. Well, the details of the settlement are confidential, so it's unclear how much money will go to those families. Lawyers say they hope this gives them some closure after four years of legal, legal battles. To some new developments this evening surrounding Measure 114, that is Oregon's voter-approved measure to bring stricter gun laws to the state. According to the Oregonian, the Oregon Court of Appeals declined to allow it to go into effect while it reviews a ruling on the measure. That ruling was made by a Harney County judge who said 114 was unconstitutional. The state is appealing and argued the law should be allowed to take effect in the meantime. The Court of Appeals denied that, but did agree to fast track its decision on the state's appeal. New at 11 tonight is the Trailblazers final home game of the season. And as the team winds down, they're also testing some new tech geared toward fans who are blind or live with low vision. And as Catherine Cook shows us, it's helping some rip citizens feel the game in a whole new way. It was Blazers versus Houston at Portland's last home game of the season Friday. And later when fans ask each other, did you see that game? The answer from those in this group will be no, I felt it. And it is telling me where the ball is at with vibration. So currently it is with the Trailblazers. Ashley Richards and other fans in this section are visually impaired. Usually when they take in basketball games, it's just with their ears. On this night, they're trying out new technology called One Court. The device tracks game data in real time, then translates the action into vibrations on this surface. This is actually a game changer. I'm very excited about using this device. Jared Mace is CEO and lead designer at One Court. He and the rest of his business team formed as students at the University of Washington. Jared says the inspiration for One Court came from a video he saw of a blind person at a soccer match. He was sitting in the stands with a woman who watched the game below and at the same time moved his hands across a game board to represent the action on the field. So it was through touch that he was gaining access. The Blazers are the first NBA team to test out the One Court devices. They hope this pilot project will pave the way for other teams and leagues to give them a try and maybe offer their fans a new way to access the action. I hope this thing becomes a thing. 
And I can watch football, my husband, and hockey. For now, one court is still in the testing phase. In fact, only eight of these prototypes exist. The Blazers say when it's really ready to go, they're all in. We love creating inclusive experiences, so anything we can do to get uh, stuff like one court into our building is uh, absolutely what we want to be doing. So next time you're watching a game, don't just use your eyes. Really feel it. Every shot, every score. And every ounce of gratitude. There's people out there that care. In North Portland, Catherine Cook, KGW News. Yeah, brilliant idea. I hope it all works out there. Still ahead on this Friday night, win or lose. Orlando's going to break down how the Blazers did and how it could impact their odds in the NBA draft. Plus, new setbacks for Portland families struggling with a high school they say is desperately in need of renovation.